Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners. I'm the co-founder of Eversound. And with me today is my friend, Dean Palombaro. Dean currently serves as the Division Executive of Communities for Ohio Living, but Dean started in senior living as an activities assistant and has held roles as administrator, executive director at various places, including the largest Ohio living community with 780 residents and 450 employees. And now Dean is overseeing multiple communities within the Ohio living family. Thanks for joining me today, Dean. Hey, Matt. Thanks. I appreciate that intro and I'm excited to uh, be with you today. Awesome. So let's talk about leadership. You know, I've learned from our original chat from a few weeks ago that we both have very similar views on leadership in terms of like being empathetic and helping grow those around us. And I'm curious, do you believe this leadership style is continuing to grow within senior living? Yeah, you know, I actually, I absolutely, I think it is. I think, you know, senior living is becoming more and more all about the people. And I think as leaders, it's important that we focus on creating environments where everyone feels welcomed, they feel like they belong, uh, valued, and successful every day. And if we do that, uh, and I'm seeing that happen even more and more uh, as we continue to move forward, if we keep doing that, then I think we continue to have these communities and these services that are just you know, top notch, and we're able to take care of people and make a difference. And I think it's huge. Absolutely. And it seems like from my experience, you know, there's always this like this fear-based leadership style, right? And now it's getting into this, this idea of actually being a leader rather than a boss. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's the, it's been a long time coming and I'm excited to see as this continues to grow and develop, especially in the senior living. Cause it's like you mentioned, it's all about the people, right? And yes. yeah. And now being a young up and comer, um, you know, what do you think our generation can bring to the table? I mean, overseeing 780 residents and 450 employees, and you're definitely young. So like, and that's a big responsibility, but what do you think is us as like a generation can help bring to the table here? Well, you know, I thought a lot about this and, you know, one thing that kept ringing in my head was when I started this, that role where I was over um, 700, that community with 780 residents and 450 employees. And I had a, uh, I had come in after, you know, a legacy leader had left after 31 years to retirement. And all I kept hearing was, you know, you have some big shoes to fill, big shoes to fill. And then one day a resident stopped me and just looked at me and said, hey, I'm sure you're hearing that you have big shoes to fill. And I said, yeah, absolutely, I am. And he looks at me and he goes, well, bring your own shoes. And I think that's what we bring as leaders is that we bring our true authentic selves. And, you know, it might, you know, from, a, a, you know, from the face value level, it sometimes might, you know, not necessarily, it might rub people the wrong way, but once people get to know us and really understand that we're all about making a difference, doing good work, doing good things. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's work, right? And we love it and we love doing what we do. And I think that we'll definitely be able to bring a different dynamic to this space. I think we also focus a lot more on the well being of people in general, uh, you know, a lot of it's mind, body, and spirit. And we find ways to make sure that people are heard and we meet people where they're at. And I think as we move forward and, and especially as we you know, continue through this pandemic, everyone's always talking about, let's go back to normal. Well, why do we want to go backwards? Let's look forward and, and, and let's, let's reshape uh, the industry. Let's reshape leadership in senior living and how we can make it better, uh, not only for the people serving now, but for the people that are coming up and going to be serving for years to come. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, I think it, with it too, we kind of grew up in this digital age of like, you know, us being probably a little bit more transparent than some of the generations, uh, you know, before us. And, you know, I see you're one of the few of the, one of the few, if not the only provider really providing some of this like behind the scenes content um, whether from your recent post of like, what's one thing the world needs most, which is awesome, which I'll tag in the, the comments here, or the, you know, the post of your dog, Otis, uh, making trips to your communities. And, you know, I'm curious, where do you see content playing a role for providers? At the end of the day, you know, in senior living, a lot of people focus on their brand and their logos and stuff, but people do business with people, not logos or the same font size. Uh, you know, I think that's where we really have to look at what goes on in our communities, what goes on even on the home and community based side, 
you know, those interactions or those relationships that we're able to build with, you know, employees or residents, those are key and those should be highlighted because not only does that show the community um, at large, but it also shows the relationships that are formed amongst team members and residents. And obviously my dog too helps as well. <laughs> I, I love it. Any, I'm all always a fan of dog content. So right. uh, I'm always promote that. And I think, you know, it's just interesting to see because your point about like the relationships and highlighting that like this is a people first industry and the more chances we can show and, and highlight that and, and show how raw it is too, right? I mean, we're all people. Right. Um, and if I see that one stock photo again on someone's website, I might like bang my head against the, the, the ground here. But uh you know, it's getting away from that as well, I find is, is super helpful and, and content is key nowadays. Absolutely. And the other thing too is, you know, a lot of what people know about senior living is what the media tells them. And it's never a good story because the media is looking at ways that they can get more hits just on drama. Well, I think it's important as providers that we're telling our story and we're telling it, we're telling the truth. We're going to tell it all. We're going to tell it first and we're going to tell it fast. And the best way to do it is on our own platforms, whether it's, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever you're on. I think it's so important that we're telling that story and, you know, we're highlighting the billions of things that go right and go well in our communities every day. And, you know, unfortunately, we work in an industry of people where accidents do happen. And, you know, it's, it's a shame that those are what's highlighted. Um, and especially when, you know, it's really just a, an accident and things happen. And so I think it's really important that we're telling our story and, and using content to do that. Yeah, I think you make a great point too, because you kind of control the story, right? You control mm -hmm. the messaging, you're controlling what's uh, what's being heard and put, there, put out there in the world. Because yeah, of course, the news always wants to highlight the most negative things because it drives clicks, which drives all the revenue dollars, but we can, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> right. Um, because I definitely see the value of creating content, you know, to help control the story and even just, you know, get the story out there. But I also think there might be a role of like content in, in leadership. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, in the content creation sort of mindset, do you also find it could be useful in, in leadership? Oh, absolutely. I think, um, especially as we continue to move forward and you're seeing a lot more consolidation in the industry where, you know, you're having multi-site providers join forces across, you know, many states. Well, that's a lot of people to reach out to. So I think there's opportunities as leaders of organizations to really get your message out there by creating a following, not only of your own employees, but of any constituent that is interested. And we could bring so much value to so many people because, you know, it kind of goes back to my earlier point with, you know, people know what they know from the media. Well, Usually what I see happening, especially um, on, the, on the skilled nursing side for short-term rehab, is when people need that level of care, it's the first time in their lives that they need that level of care. If there's ways that we could bring that value and start educating people as a whole and providing just knowledge on how things actually work, uh, I think would make that process much more simpler. I think also with having, you know, in, in most households, you have, you have dual incomes now, right? Whereas, you know, when I grew up, you know, my mom was able to take care of my grandparents, uh, it, but that's not the case in most households anymore. So you, you lose that informal caregiver, but then also you don't have that access to the continuums, to everything that goes on in senior living. And there's ways as leaders that we can bring that value to people. I think creating contents, you know, one of the, the best ways to do it. But then also as a provider with, you know, huge teams, I think sharing messages there and highlighting your teams there and, and showing and, and really getting personal on some things on, you know, what you do as an individual to, you know, help get through each day. Because a lot of times as leaders, we, we, we seem as these really calm, you know, well-focused people when inside there's a million things going on us, uh, on, on within us. And we're able to manifest that and then show a different way to keep everybody calm. And then, you know, that helps lead. And, but there's also a process that you have to follow to get there. And I think sharing just things that we do individually can help others too. Even if it helps one person, that's making a difference and that's a huge impact. 
Oh, absolutely. And I find too, and I think this is like a good theme here of what you've been talking about, like providing that content just gets to show that you're a person, right? You're a person mm -hmm. in a leadership position and people want to work with people, right? Like we exactly. all go through our own struggles. We all have our own issues and stuff. And even just highlighting that and being vulnerable, you know, helps to build that level of trust and leadership, right? Is you've got to trust your leader or it's just not a great relationship. So <laughs> right. yeah. Um, now, Dean, last question here, you know, if you were to look in your crystal ball and uh, give other senior living leaders, just like three key takeaways to help guide them over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months, what would you say? That's a, that's, that's a real good question. I think there's more than three things that I can say, but I would say the top, you know, top three things that I would, um, you know, just continue to focus on. And, and this is something that I'm doing personally as well. Um, I think it's important that we see the good in all people, um, you know, with our workforce challenges, I think that's super important right now. I think also learning to ask of all actions, um, you know, with um, why are they doing that, but starting with your own. And that'll really help, you know, as you go into each situation, all right, why am I doing this? Well, you know, you know, throughout the pandemic, I kept asking myself that, and it was always for the health and well-being of the, the residents and the employees. And that's why we had to make those decisions. And I think the final one um, is just treat each and every moment, uh, no matter how challenging, uh, as something that's to be embraced, uh, not, avoid, not avoided. So it was meant to happen. And yeah, it, it might be horrible what's happening, but that's okay. Embrace it and go through it, figure it out. And, and at the end of the day, it will be okay. I love it. I love it. Got to give you a mic to drop at the end of that, Dean. That, <laughs> that was great. Well, well, Dean, I want to thank you for, for spending some time here today with me. It's been awesome getting to know you, and I'm super excited for people like you to kind of leave their imprint um, on the senior living industry and know we're in great hands, uh, in the hands of people like you. So thank you for all that you do. Thanks, man. I appreciate that you take the time to, to talk to people uh, like, like me and others uh, to really help us and the industry as a whole uh, build the right awareness for senior living and the great things that, that happen, that continue to happen, and will, will, will always happen. Love it. Well, thanks again, Dean. All right. See you, Matt.